I'm here at the AIPIA Congress in Utrecht and I have a meeting with Mr. Peter Higgins who is the CEO and founder of UI Technology uh, and you have invented sort of a smart label. Uh, can you first of all tell me the story about this invention? Um, in 2008 I was making lunch for my son who was eight at the time. Uh, I took a jar of mayonnaise out of the fridge it was already open, I'd opened it, um, but I couldn't remember when. It says in the back, once open, use within four weeks. But I couldn't remember. And because there's raw egg in the mayonnaise, uh, I didn't want to risk it with my son, so I threw it out and made something else instead. Uh, after lunch, I went back to the fridge and I found that there was more jars with the same thing, once open, use within two weeks, four weeks, whatever. Uh, and I thought there must be some way of knowing when something has been open for the first time. So this is not to do with the use by date or the sell by date, but more to do with once it's been opened for the first time, it's got to be used within a certain time period. Um, I'm an architect by training, I'm not a scientist. Um, I didn't know who to go and speak to. and that's, uh, So I sat in it for six months, doing my own research on uh, um, how to do this. Um, we then introduced to uh, a university and we were able to produce uh, a lab demonstrator uh, and I funded the development for the first two and a half years of the project so there was no uh, sales, no income, no salary for me, I uh, just put my own money into the development as we went by and when in 2012 we uh, identified um, not just food that had critical shelf life, that there were other products in uh, other sectors, for example, in aerospace and life sciences, pharmaceuticals. Uh, and in 2012, we raised $1 million from a group of uh, senior executives in the aerospace industry in America. They identified a problem that they suffered with and that our U label was to help solve that problem. Uh, of knowing when products had been opened or mixed together for the first time and had to be used within a certain time period, whether that's a few hours uh, or a few days or whatever. Um, it, it's not necessarily the cost of the product that the, the label would be attached to, it's, if it's the cost of, of making it right again, the cost of rework, the downtime of resolving that issue, which a product which might cost $20 but could cost $100,000 to rectify. So they immediately saw the benefit of that, which is why they invested in it. With that million dollars, we were able to take it out of a, a university lab and then scale that up for a manufacturing process. And in 2014, at the end of the year, we raised a further $2 million uh, from the, the, the American guys, plus also a group of high net worths here in the UK, uh, where we are based, and that uh, that was used as, as being used now to grow the management team, but also to scale up for manufacture, um, uh, um, for distribution as well. Our business model is not to manufacture anything ourselves; we will license the technology, but we've got to make sure that our technology is scalable in, in volume because uh, we know that. There are many, many sectors that uh, has the potential for our, using our, our label. We don't do any, um, up to now, we've not done any outbound marketing as such, but uh, we have been have literally getting inquiries from all over the world from various companies looking to use our, our own label, uh, which is an interesting discussion about how it can be used, uh, where not to do with um, uh, anything that we thought of. Um, so they're bringing ideas to us and we're assessing um, can we do it now or can we do it in six months or can we do it in a year. It's all about managing potential customers' expectations. If we can do it now, that's great. If not, we'll work with them to see what it is that they're looking for, um, what is the volume that they require uh, and, and a cost price as well. You know, there's no point saying that we need it down at 10 cents and we're, we're at 30 cents. We've got to make sure that we can, again, coming back to manage everyone's expectations uh, with that. But with anything, I think with anything with new innovative products, there is a, a cost implication to begin with. But then we know with economies of scale, especially with our label, that we know that that price will come down dramatically and then, uh, for, for further adoption. Nobody likes um, sticking their head above the parapet being new, but as soon as somebody does, everybody else follows with that. And that, that's what we're, we're looking for.
But, but um, how, how does this label actually work? So we have original label is a, a microfluidic process. There's three components to it. There's a reservoir with a small amount of uh, fluid, which is a secret recipe. There's a, a microfluidic channel, and then there's a material substrate. The actual label is made up of about nine layers uh, of uh, film and adhesive, um, and the label can be uh, calibrated to minutes, hours, days, weeks, up to a few months just now. And it's the, to, to make the changes on the time periods uh, is a mixture of the, the recipe of the fluid uh, plus the width of the microfluidic channel so that when it's been activated, so that it's automatically activated once the, the container's been opened, it breaks a seal and that starts the timing device. So that once it's started, it can't stop. Then we have uh, the, the, the fluid is transferred from the reservoir along the microflight channel at a constant rate, which delivers it to the material substrate. And then there's a capillary action of changing uh, the colour um, from clear, from uh, opaque to green, and then to red. And I suppose uh, I'm sure that those fluids are food safe. They are very yes, exactly. We had to do that from day one. We knew that we were aiming for the food industry so from day one we had to use product that was food safe uh, and recyclable as well uh, and all the likes. Are you also producing the, the labels? Do you have the machinery for that? or? Yeah, well, again we're, we're, we're trying to use um, standard machinery. It's more we call it a label and people think it's printed. It's more a converting process with the nine layers in the label. It's bringing these nine layers together in line uh, and fine cutting that has to be either die cutting or special cutting for certain parts of the, the, the label um, as well. Um, so that we're, we're reaching out to uh, partners around the world. We've just come back from America to two potential manufacturers there. We've got about two or three in Europe that could um, make, make the labels as well. As I say, our, we are not really manufacturing ourselves. We will license the technology out and look to these partners to sell onto their own, part, their own customers as well. Um, uh, and they are delivered in a roll or a on rolls, yes. Again, we, we, we realised very early on to get the, the, the cost down and speed of manufacture. It had to be done on a roll to roll. The very early days were literally done by hand uh, the, and we've been experimenting with sheet uh, feeding uh, process because some clients have asked it to be delivered on sheets um, but on a roll to roll process so that's automatically um, supplied to a food manufacturer for example they would put it on at, at in the food processing part uh, and the packaging so that it acts just like a, a, an anti-tamper strip so that the, the, the UE label is presented to the jar for example then flipped over onto the lid so that when the consumer picks it off the shelf it's already on it takes it home opens the lid for the first time that breaks the seal and that starts the, the timing and this is also a way to stop uh, food waste that is must discuss, discuss those days well th this this is it um, it's not just about if there's any element of doubt about food some people will throw it out but because they can't remember when it was opened. Um, a typical jar of food in the UK costs £1.70. If you only used half of it, it's effectively £3.40, you would never have picked it off the shelf in the first place. So that if it is within that use within periods, say three or four weeks, and it's still safe to use, then you'll use it. If it has passed it, then okay, you know that, and it's thrown it out. But um, uh, when it's open and activated, I mean, let's say that it's set for four weeks. That also means that it must be stored in the ideal conditions. I mean, for example, eight degrees or something like that. So the consumer must at least know how to store. They can't have it standing on uh, out in the kitchen, wherever, and then accept uh, assume that it will last for four days, four weeks. It must be, it must be chilled, that, that, for example. That, that's correct. So some of the products, we, we, all we're doing is we're following the manufacturer's recommendations. So if it says. Uh, used within four weeks with no storage conditions we accept it yeah. so our original label it has a temperature temperature range of minus one to 40 degrees which covers a whole lot of, of products but if for example it has to be a refrigerated product between one and eight degrees that um, the, the label the, the fluid and the recipe will be um, mixed accordingly so that if it goes above eight degrees for example rather than it lasting four weeks it'll only last two weeks because it's been left out and then it's mimicking the, 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 the life scale, lifespan of the product if, it, if it's not been refrigerated. And um, maybe coming back, I should have asked this before, uh, it could be applied with normal uh, label machines or so? Yes, it is. Uh, again, we, we need it for, 
realise with for it to be adopted by manufacturers that have to use standard equipment so that we're using uh, the simple machinery that um, anti-tamper strip labels are applied to. So the labels are, apply, are presented to the jar and flipped over onto the lid. Yeah. Could we say that this is um, a typical example of the Scottish uh, genes, so to say? I mean, not to throw away things, <laughs> erase yeah. things. Yeah, well, there, there are a lot of famous Scottish inventors uh, over, the, over the years. Um, I, I think what has come through, though, is that we, I, I came up with the idea in 2008, this is 2015, seven years later, uh, I think the, Scot the Scots are famous for being consistent and, and, and persisting with a, an idea. But what, what's come out of it, though, is that we know that there, there are customers who are looking to do it. We've got to make sure the technology works with that. And w w as probably our feet are grounded on making sure that it does work, and then we know that it will sell. Uh, is it on the market yet? It's not on the market yet. We're running trials. We were going to run trials this year with a generic label, but we have a new manufacturer. We were able to demonstrate that rather than uh, give it this generic label, we have um, the opportunity at this stage for the trials to give out something bespoke to that customer running the trial. So one customer may ask for a three-day one, one may ask for a seven-day one, one may ask for a two-week one. So that's what we're producing just now, is those different time periods for the customer. We are testing them in-house. We have our own labs to test that. And then early next year, we're running trials with, with them, which will then run into, turn into revenues with us. Okay, thank you, and good luck with the introduction. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Cheers.